So in the last video, we left off comparing the average number of drinks consumed by college students who are either in Greek life or not in Greek life. And so what we see here is kind of interesting. We notice that students who are in Greek life consume on average many more drinks than students who are not in Greek life. Specifically, it's twice as many drinks in this particular sample. So that would be an interesting finding for us in this research, right? We were interested in understanding whether or not uh, being involved in Greek life influenced students' alcohol consumption. And based off the data that we collected here, we see or would infer that yes, being in Greek life does result to higher alcohol consumption for college students. We could also specify our results by gender, right? So this left table here shows the number of alcoholic beverages consumed by students who identify as men. And this table on the right, the alcohol consumption of students who identify as women. So here again, we see we had five participants who were men. They consumed a total of 40 drinks. Oops, sorry, that should be 45. 45 divided by five equals nine. And over here, we had six individuals who identified as women. And these women consumed 19 drinks in that week. So 19 divided by six would give us an average of 3.2. So on average, male students consume almost three times as many alcoholic beverages in comparison to women in our sample. We could also specify our results even further by taking a look at how both gender and Greek life may impact alcohol consumption. So this table on the left here shows our three participants in our sample that were men in a frat. Then we have two individuals in our sample who are men, but not in a fraternity. We had two women in our sample who were in a sorority and uh, three women, or excuse me, looks like four women in our sample who are women and not in a sorority, okay? So we could again calculate averages for all of these different subgroups in our sample. And if we do that, we see that on average, men in fraternity consume 10 alcoholic beverages a week. We see that men who are not fraternities consume 7.5 alcoholic beverages per week. We see that women in sororities consume five alcoholic beverages per week, and women who are not in sororities consume 2.3 alcoholic beverages per week. So based off of these observations, what are some findings that we might extract from this data, right? So this is where we get to the so what, who cares? We collected this data, we analyzed it, we're seeing some trends here based off of our little mini statistical analysis. How would we extrapolate findings from this? What's the takeaway message that you'd want to communicate to people? Well, we see kind of two things here. The first is that being involved in a fraternity or sorority definitely does seem to con uh, contribute to higher rates of alcohol consumption in comparison to students who are not in fraternities and sororities. And interestingly, gender also seems to play a pretty significant uh, factor in predicting whether or not you'll consume alcohol, as both men in and out of fraternities consume more alcoholic beverages per week in comparison to women, both in and out of sororities, right? So reporting our findings, how would we go about articulating the findings from this project? Well, when you're commun com communicating the results of your research, the way that you go about communicating those will typically depend on the method you used. It could be done through figures or tables. Perhaps we could uh, produce a graph or a chart to display our findings similar to the tables we just covered on the previous slide. Or we might uh, communicate those in writing. You know, like I said, we might write up a paper that we would try to get published as a scholarly source in an academic journal. After analyzing the data you collected, what can you say regarding your research question or hypotheses? Again, our goal with our research is always to try and answer or test our research question or hypotheses. The findings that we communicate should either support, refute, or offer new information to theory or previous research. Again, the goal of conducting research is to build the literature in that area to address gaps that we identified. So make sure we're communicating how our findings address that particular gap that we acknowledged when conducting our literature review. And we should always, always, always position our findings in the literature that we reviewed. So again, science, conducting science and research, the part of that is to build our understanding, to build and further our knowledge. And the way we do that is by speaking about how our findings contribute to previously established findings that have been identified in the literature review. And again, always emphasizing the so what and who cares. What does our research contribute that other research has left out in the past? So this is just an example of how I might communicate the results of this fake study that we conducted with alcohol consumption. 
Consistent with previous research, and I'll cite a scholarly source that has found this finding, this study found that students who are a member of a fraternity or sorority consume more alcoholic beverages per week than students who are not members of fraternities or sororities. The findings from this study also suggest that gender may influence alcohol consumption, given that male-identified college students, regardless of fraternity membership, drink more heavily than female-identified college students, even female students in sororities. These findings suggest that while participation in Greek life may result in greater alcohol consumption, identifying male may have a stronger impact on alcohol consumption, right? So a simple brief blurb here uh, that would, you know, this is a mini look at what uh, writing a research paper would look like, right? This is one paragraph that would uh, consist of the finding section of a paper, but that's generally how we go about conducting research. So again, a very time consuming and laborious process but it is one of the most important aspects of being a sociologist. Since we are a science, we need to know how to conduct good science.